Madam Clerk. Oral questions by members? Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Everyone in BC knows, everyone in BC knows that the BC Liberals misled people in the last election about the HST. In fact, Honourable Speaker, according to the Premier herself, Members. according to the Premier herself, about her, all her colleagues, they were sneaky, Honourable Speaker. Well, perhaps... I mean, per, perhaps, perhaps, Honourable Speaker, with the exception of the member for Burnaby Lougheed, but Honourable Speaker, what's the Premier's record? What's the Premier's record, Honourable Speaker? She said two months ago, the Premier said, that she wouldn't change the rate of the HST or even talk about it before the election because that would be, quote, buying votes. And then she did the opposite. In her own words, she went out and bought votes, Honourable Speaker. She promised, and I quote, I'm not going to be out there cheerleading and trying to give people some kind of snow job. Now she's spending $5 million in taxpayers' adult money on partisan ads, Honourable Speaker. Oh, I know. Sneaky, Honourable Speaker. Speaker. Sneaky. She promised equal, equal funding for both sides in the debate. She broke that promise. She promised, and I quote, the referendum will be conducted in the same manner as a provincial election. And she broke that promise, Honourable Speaker. How can the people of BC believe anything the BC Liberals or the Premier have to say about the HST? The Premier of the Province of British Columbia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to welcome the, the Leader of the Opposition. I'm glad he showed up today. It's nice to hear him with a question about the HST. I'm delighted to have my opportunity and get up and speak to it. Of course, the member for Cowichan Valley was, was so eloquent today. And, um, so eloquent today, talked a lot about going backward. Talked a lot about going backward to the decade that we saw in the 1990s when 50,000 people fled the province, and, he was, and he, I think he reminded all of us about what the future could hold if we go back to a party where they're talking about having a 12% tax, a 12% tax for British Columbians versus a 10% tax. And I think when British Columbians, when British Columbians fill out their ballots on the 24th, they're certainly going to be making their own decision about it, and we will live by the verdict that they hand us. But I do think But I do think though when they're faced with that decision when they're faced with the decision for the opposition's call for a 12% tax or the government's proposal for a 10% tax which after all is a whole lot better for BC families I think I know which one they'll choose Members, I want to remind members on both sides of the House, we want to listen to the question and we want to listen to the answer. The Leader of the Opposition has a supplemental. Uh, well, you know, I have to say, Honourable Speaker, uh, for the Premier, it's not every day you bring in closure on yourself. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> wants a 7% tax on a sandwich in a coffee shop, I want a 0% tax. She wants a 7% tax. She wants, she wants a 7% tax, Honourable Speaker, on children's sports programs, I want a 0% tax. She wants a 7% tax on bicycles, I want a 0% tax. If the Premier kept her word, Honourable Speaker, there'd be third-party sp third spending limits 
in this referendum campaign. If the Premier had kept her word, there would be disclosure of who paid for the ads. And the Premier's taxpayer-funded stick men, Honourable Speaker, they wouldn't be allowed. They're costing us $5 million, money that could be better spent keeping group homes open for people with development. <laughs> Partisan BC Liberal ads in a provincial election put out by the provincial government would be illegal, Honourable Speaker. The Except Premier has word. changed the Except rules, broken her word to stack the deck, oh, Honourable Speaker. So why doesn't she give the people of BC, do a, the people of BC a favour and put a stop to those partisan ads today? Period. Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, for over a year now, the members of the opposition have been saying that the government didn't do enough to talk to people. Exactly. That the government exactly. didn't do that the government didn't do enough to listen to people. And what we've done is we've gone out and we've listened to British Columbians. We've listened to over to about three hundred thousand British Columbians. It's the biggest listening exercise in the history of the province. We are communicating with British Columbians. We are communicating with British Columbians. We are making sure British Columbians have all the information that they need to be able to cast an informed ballot on this issue. And I think while the member can come up with all kinds of excuses and all kinds of reasons in advance why he thinks people might not vote his way on it, the real reason that people will probably, I hope people will decide not to support the New Democrats' position on this is because they want to increase taxes by 40% on iPods, on furniture, on new cars. When they're talking about a 12% tax versus a 10% tax, that's exactly what they'll be presenting British Columbians with. And you know what? I think when they go to the polls, British Columbians are going to say, shelve the 12. Members, the Leader of the Opposition has a further supplemental. Uh, Honourable Speaker, I'd like the, the Premier to tell us one person in British Columbia who thinks it's a good idea for them to spend taxpayers' money on partisan ads in this referendum. One person that she talked to. The stick men, you know, they don't really exist in time and space, Honourable Speaker. They don't really exist. Other than the advertising executives that she contracted to do the ads, can she name a single person, a single person in British Columbia who thinks it's a good idea when her government is closing group homes, Honourable Speaker, for adults with developmental dif disabilities? Closing group homes to spend $5 million on partisan ads on the HST. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I don't know why the member seems to have an issue with us engaging with British Columbians and making sure that British Columbians have the information that they need to cast an informed vote. This could be the most important Premier, vote on a taxation issue. Tax. You kept telling us to. You tell Members. Continue, Premier. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I don't know what the member has against the government listening and engaging with British Columbians, making sure that British Columbians have the information that they need to be able to cast an informed vote on what could be the most important referendum on taxation issues that any Canadian has ever been asked to decide. Now, there have been a number of things that have happened since I became Premier. We got the independent panel report which said that it's going to add a $350 burden under the old HST for families. I didn't believe that was fair. We also learned that British Columbians, when we went out and we listened to them, wanted to find a way to rebalance the burden of taxes so that we could raise it on business and lower it on families, and we've done that. And we've also gone out and we've listened to 300,000 people. And you know, I could be, the, 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 you know, the, the opposition, the opposition 
if they spent a little bit of time listening, would probably have heard by now that advocating for a 12% tax over a 10% tax is not what British Columbians want. We engaged, we listened, I could be rigid, I could be stubborn, I could be ideological, I could be stuck in old-fashioned ideas, but if I was all those things, I'd probably be running as a New Democrat. <laughs> Your time, members. <laughs> Member for Victoria Beacon Hill. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to say to the Premier and the BC Liberals, if they'd been listening in the first place, they wouldn't have brought in the HST in British Columbia. Columbia families under this Premier and the BC Liberals are paying up to 7% more on countless items in their day-to-day -day life. This Premier and the BC Liberals want families to keep paying more now and after the referendum. The HST touches families in every part of their life, from birth to grave. Even prenatal classes, Mr. Speaker, classes that have parents prepare a safe and healthy arrival for their newborns are now fully taxed under the HST. So my question is to the Premier, why is she taxing young families under her family first agenda? Minister of Finance. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I know that the math is difficult for the members opposite, but I'll try and walk them through this pretty straightforwardly. Um, Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is that if you're paying 10% on all your retail purchases, all your furniture, all your clothing, all of the purchases that people make every day in their lives, you're actually farther ahead than you are paying 12% under an inefficient PST plus GST system, Mr. Speaker. That's actually how it works. But you know, Mr. Speaker, I do think that there is something of interest I have noted. We have listened to now two days' worth of arguments from the NDP about why they don't like the HST, and I heard all the different arguments, including from the Leader of the Opposition, but one thing none of us did here, one thing none of us did here was the impassioned arguments about why the PST makes sense, why they want to go against the tide of every other jurisdiction in Canada and around the world and go back to a retail sales tax, Mr. Speaker. That's what we have yet to hear from the NDP opposite, Mr. Speaker. Member has supplemental. I do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very clear that the minister isn't listening at all, and it's no surprise to anyone on this side of the House or the public in British Columbia because the BC Liberals haven't been listening from the beginning on the HST. The HST is costing families more. Parents want opportunities for their children to grow and to thrive. They want to provide them opportunities to learn, to discover their talents. We're coming up to summer, Mr. Speaker, and summer camp now will be subjected 
to a tax. Parents will be paying 7% more so their children can go to camp in July and August. They'll be paying 7% more for art courses, for sports camps, for tutoring, for hockey school. So again, my question is to the Premier, why is she trying to force families to choose 7% over 0%? How is that putting families first? Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure what part of listening to almost 300,000 people in the largest listening exercise in government is not listening to the people. What we actually did was listen, and we responded with what we heard, which was to reduce the rate to 10 percent and provide transition payments for families with children, $175 for each and every child, and $175 for seniors under 40,000, Mr. Speaker. But, you know, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to come back to the second edition of uncomfortable NDP facts because clearly, yes, yes, I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I would like to point out, Mr. Speaker, that when, when the uh, NDP first ran in uh, 1991, Mr. Speaker, they promised not to raise taxes at all. And in the first two years, after raising taxes by nearly $2 billion, one of the interesting taxes that they raised was the PST rate from 6 to 7 percent, Mr. Speaker. But, but they didn't just raise the PST, Mr. Speaker. That's consistent with what they always do. They also expanded the coverage to include engine tune-ups, tire installation, appliance repairs, repairs to business equipment, alteration and repairs to clothing and shoes, Mr. Speaker. If it moved, they wanted to tax it and tax it higher, Mr. Speaker. We want to move it lower, Mr. Speaker. 10 percent HST is far better any day than a 12 percent GST plus PST, which is the NDP's preferred approach, Mr. Speaker. Sir E. Wally. Mr. Speaker, you'd never know from listening to the Minister of Finance that he's proposing a $2.6 billion tax increase to be paid by families and small business over the next two years. Well, let's turn to something else that touches BC families. At this time of the year, many parents are looking forward to the marriage of their children, the weddings of their children. Yet these families are being forced to pay more under the BC Liberal HST. Does the Premier really think, based on what she said in the recent past, that British Columbians are going to accept her HST gimmick um, and be bought with their own money? Minister. Well, you know, Mr. Speaker, um, imagine this is, the, this is the same group that just voted against a motion that would reduce the tax burden on every family in British Columbia and increase it on large corporations. And they just stood up to a person and voted against it. Now, I know why they did that, Mr. Speaker. I know why they did it, because they voted against every single one of the tax reductions for personal income taxes, almost 40 per cent since we first got elected. They voted against every single reduction in the general corporate tax rate from 16.5 down to 10. They voted against every reduction in the small business tax rate. They voted against the elimination of the corporate capital tax. So not surprisingly, they vote against another reduction for families and, and individuals across British Columbia, which is marching the HST rate down to 10 percent. But in their world, I can't understand how their math works. How does their math work? When we know, Mr. Speaker, from the independent panel report, which they were fond of quoting only a week and a half ago, <laughs> using the same numbers, every single family at every single income level is ahead to, to the tune of $120 on average as a result of a 10 percent HST, Mr. Speaker. Those are incontrovertible facts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, NDP math has never made sense to British Columbians, but they get when you're paying 10 percent on everything, not 12 percent, you are better off, Mr. Speaker. Member has a supplemental. I do, Mr. Speaker. Well, let's hear some BC Liberal Premier math. 
The Premier explained not too long ago that a 2% cut in the rate would create a fiscal disaster. And she said, and I quote, we are going to have $1.6 billion bigger deficit, we're going to have one, or we're going to have $1.6 billion fewer hard operations, special needs teachers, school facilities, hospital emergency rooms. I mean, that's where the money comes from ultimately. So yes, government could cut it, but at what cost to the citizens? Indeed, to the Premier, at what cost to the citizens? Minister. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And of course, this is often the case with the NDP. They selectively quote, so they miss the rest of what the Premier said, which was that we may have to raise other taxes to make up for the revenue. And she's absolutely correct about that, Mr. Speaker. That's why we listen to British Columbians and we rebalance the equation so that families and every British Columbian at every income level will be, effect, uh, will be a net beneficiary as a result of 10% HST. And we are temporarily increasing the general corporate tax rate for large companies by 2% to help do that, Mr. Speaker. That's exactly what happened. But I can tell you this, Mr. Speaker, the finance critic across the way and the leader of the opposition want to go back to a 12% PST plus GST, which not only doesn't make sense by almost any independent analysis, but it also hammers the fiscal plan to the tune of over $3 billion to the negative, Mr. Speaker. And yet every day in this House they say they want to spend more in health care, in education, in parks, in every other ministry of government spend more, and they want to do it with a budget decision that will cost them $3 billion to the negative. That makes no sense, Mr. Speaker. Members, 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 member for Fraser Nicola. Thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. BC families are being hit twice uh, uh, by the BC Liberals because many are also small businesses. And small businesses, uh, Honourable Speaker, can distinguish between uh, fact and liberal uh, uh, fiction. So they know when the rate is 0%, uh, their customers who are BC families have more purchasing power compared to the 7% liberal tax increase. In Kelowna, Friends Neighbourhood Pub, which is uh, owned and operated by the Dollywall family, uh, has witnessed a dramatic 15% decline in sales due to the HST. And Honourable Speaker, why does this Premier's version of the so-called families first agenda include punishing family-run small businesses like the Dolly Wall. Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm pleased that the uh, NDP opposition has finally released some of the big guns to uh, answer the <laughs> questions here, and I, I take this with some trepidation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, Mr. P Speaker, the two organizations that represent the vast majority of small business in the province, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business and Shelf Space BC, which represents all of the retail uh, outlets, Mr. Speaker, have said that at a 10% HST rate, they, their members support it to the tune of 83% for the Canadian Federation of Independent Business and 93% for retailers right across the province, Mr. Speaker. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, we certainly recognize, we've been clear, in fact, that the change we made to the 0.05 drinking law has had some impact on some restaurateurs, particularly on liquor sales, Mr. Speaker. But of course, when you make a change like that, you also have to balance that against some of the benefits. And as the Attorney General has pointed out, Mr. Speaker, there are 23 more people alive today as a result of not being involved in fatalities, as a result of drinking and driving. Association to make sure we can do everything we can to try and minimize that impact as much as we can, Mr. Speaker. Member for North Coast.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The BC Liberals promised health care when and where you need it, and that promise, that promise has been as good as their promise not to bring in the HST. One wonders when they'll make the next promise they won't keep. The people on Haida Gwaii sure don't believe their promises. The Northwest Regional Hospital District has practically been begging for support for Queen Charlotte General Hospital. And Speaker, they're using half an ATCO trailer at the edge of a parking lot for a morgue. Will the health minister get up in this house today and finally live up to their health care promises and give patients on Haida Gwaii the health services they deserve? Minister of Health. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker, and to the uh, member for the question. Actually, uh, I am proud of the, the record of a government that has invested over the last decade $7 billion in, in improving uh, capital infrastructure for health care right around the province. Mr. Speaker, I am proud of a government that has taken concrete steps in the aftermath of the 1990s to actually train uh, twice as many physicians in British Columbia as was formerly the case, train more nurses and health care professionals. Uh, I also understand, Mr. Speaker, that there are still places in British Columbia that are uh, confronted by challenge, and as I indicated during the course of uh, four days in estimates, I'm anxious to address those challenges in a constructive way uh, and in concert with the member. The member has a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. They're mixing chemo drugs outside in a wooden shed because they, the hospital pharmacy lacks the space and adequate uh, ventilation. The only reason they're not using the Tim Hortons for care model is because there isn't one on Haida Gwaii. The hospital district says, and I quote, though the staff do the best they can, there is a tremendous negative impact on families and human dignity. We are past the make-do phase. Mr. Speaker, the situation at Queen Charlotte General Hospital is totally unacceptable. Will the minister do the right thing for patients on Haida Gwaii and ensure that the redevelopment at Queen Charlotte General Hospital goes ahead? Minister. Thanks, Mr. Speaker, and again to the, uh, uh, the member. Uh, in the last number of years, the provision for cancer treatment in British Columbia has expanded dramatically to where we now have five centres spread across British Columbia where people can go to receive cancer treatment. And another, uh, and another facility uh, just being opened in Prince George uh, announced several days ago, Mr. Speaker. So the, so the, the provision for service uh, has expanded dramatically. Continue, Minister. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there is, uh, if you look, across the province at the provision of services that are now in place, it, far, it is a far greater, it is an improvement, a dramatic improvement over what was in place uh, 10 years ago. And Mr. Speaker, in the, last week, in the last week, I have had submissions from the members' colleagues that amount to over $3 billion in additional capital construction. Mr. Speaker, we have spent seven over the last 10 years, and we have balanced in an appropriate way our desire to provide the very best to BC families with the capacity of the taxpayers to pay for the very best, Mr. Speaker. Member report, go Quitlam. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. We're not talking about the rest of the province. We're talking about Haida Gwaii, one of the most remote, isolated parts of British Columbia, Honourable Speaker, where they're mixing chemochemicals in an old smokehouse, Honourable Speaker, where an ATCO trailer is functioning as a morgue, where an old greenhouse is the physiotherapy centre, Honourable Speaker, the types of conditions that make Tim Hortons care at RCH look like Cadillac service, Honourable Speaker. That's not acceptable to the people of Haida Gwaii. Right. 
They have used their own money to prepare a plan to change this situation, to actually put in place proper facilities. The question is really straightforward. When are the people of Haida Gwaii going to get some attention from this government and get some facilities that they can be proud of in the 21st century instead of an ATCO trailer? Minister. Thanks, uh, Mr. Speaker, and to the, uh, the member for the uh, question. In fact, progress is being made. Uh, progress is being made on the development of a plan that will see the, uh, the campus, uh, the hospital campus, uh, renewed and uh, improved in a dramatic, in a dramatic way. Uh, planning is. I, I, it's way, it's coming. I thought members uh, were interested in, in hearing this. Steps are being taken, uh, Mr. Speaker, to employ uh, and partner with the same talented agencies and individuals that have given us new facilities in places like Abbotsford, in places like Vernon, in places like the Lower Mainland. Facilities, facilities and pro... Continue, Minister. Facilities and partnerships, Mr. Speaker, that members of the official NDP opposition spoke against time and time and time again, Mr. Speaker. We are going to move ahead. We are going to move ahead in partnership with Northern Health. We are going to move ahead in partnership with the folks on Haida Gwaii. And we are going to ensure that the families on Haida Gwaii have the very best you, provision for medical health services right in Haida Gwaii. Bell ends question period. Opposition House Leader.